Yes. So hello everyone. We at ASCI I hope you are all doing well and Monday hasn't proved to be mundane for you. They say that a university is is the beginning of anything you want and that universities should be a place of light, of liberty and of learning. So shoot for the stars and may the University Connect career fair show you the way. But before we set forth in that journey, let me remind you of a few earthly things. This session is being recorded and it is also live on our YouTube channel. We welcome you to revisit the content as it will be available on the YouTube channel and also share it with your friends. While you are there, please make sure to subscribe our YouTube channel. That way you will get our updates on a regular basis. Now, while the session is going on, we request you to mute yourself and keep your videos turned off so that we can listen to the speaker without any interruption. In the meantime, feel free to put your comments and questions in the chat. We will be monitoring the chat and taking your questions to the respective speaker. Also, please stay on till the very end because we are going to have an exclusive online breakout room session for you to interact within a smaller group. You will be free to choose the breakout rooms when uh, we open it up and then you can go ahead and uh, have your questions ready for the person. Let me now hand over to Piyush, our dynamic ACI national president and he's, he's an entrepreneur, a senior VP, and so many other things that I will let him speak for himself. So give me one second to like spotlight him. Go, go, uh, take it on, Piyush. Thank you, Vasla. Thank you for setting us up. And uh, of course, um, you didn't get the memo. Uh, I changed my jobs about five months back. So I am a oh, chief sorry. digital officer and a chief transformation officer with uh, a small startup in the Silicon Valley. Uh, but more on that later. Today, I'm wearing multiple hats. Today, my hat is ASCI hat. And um, uh, with that, what I want to do is welcome you all to this program for ASCI University Connect. And ASCI University Connect is part of five strategic initiatives that ASCI has. So for those who are new to ASCI, American Society of Engineers of Indian Origin, was formed in 1983 with the sole purpose of creating a platform for networking amongst the Indian diaspora and have a great Indo-American technology relationship. We took on that challenge in the Silicon Valley when we established the chapter here in 2015 to promote this uh, feeling of belonging amongst the uh, younger generation and create opportunities for youth. So there are five strategic uh, initiatives that we have, and I would want to talk about those uh, very shortly, uh, but our vision, mission, and purpose haven't changed. We want to nurture the young generation, and we want to make sure that we are letting our uh, youth um, uh, the youngsters in our uh, Asian Indian diaspora get internships and get jobs. And that is very much central to the theme of University Connect. So of the various uh, programs that we launched in 2020 and 2021, uh, we have expanded those in 2022 with our strategy to take from Mentor Connect to University Connect, uh, Engineering Tales and Getting Real with Engineering Webinars are continuing. We have our youth programs, the STEM programs, YTE. And uh, of course, for 2022, we have <clears throat> a, a revamped Corporate Connect program that uh, we uh, have launched here. Uh, but more precisely, what is University Connect? University Connect is about establishing our engineering roots. Catch them young is a phrase that I use often. And it is because I feel um, whether you are in the university or preparing to get to university, if you get connected with your engineering roots, if you start the uh, learn the art of networking, if you develop a sense of bonding and uh, know how to leverage the professional bodies, 
then your career is all set. And that is true for not only if you are in a job, but also if you're going for an entrepreneurship uh, later on in your career. So with that, uh, University Connect program was conceived. And again, these strategies are all part of our, you know, uh, the crisis mode uh, that we got, all got in during COVID when we couldn't do live programs. So we started doing all these virtual programs, but I'm glad to say that today we are live in um, multiple locations, especially the biggest location is the Dallas location where we have more than 200 students uh, in the audience there. Uh, and uh, the professor and uh, the Dallas chapter president would come on uh, line sh shortly. But uh, for the rest of us, uh, we will continue the program as is uh, online and want to make it worthwhile for those who are participating online as well. So uh, that said, I want to uh, give a shout out to our sponsors, uh, Juniper uh, Networks, who's supported us uh, since this year. And uh, uh, we've got Raj Yavatkar, who would be the keynote today. And uh, of course, uh, Emerson, Benedict, and O'Reilly have supported us as well for today's program. Um, so uh, the various uh, folks who are uh, going to be speaking today, uh, after I uh, get to the keynote from uh, Raj, we'll have two career coaches, Dilip Saraf and uh, Padma Kulkarni. Uh, they would be uh, talking about different topics. Dilip uh, will talk about art of storytelling and uh, uh, Padma will talk about the importance of LinkedIn and how social networking plays a role and how to leverage and how to make your profile better uh, to be attractive to the recruiters. And then we'll hear from uh, the CEO of uh, Veridic and we'll hear from the professor at UTD and we'll also hear from our partners at uh, Emerson. So that uh, said, uh, I also want to flash on the screen some of the uh, monthly network uh, uh, newsletters that go on, which detail our activities. There are certain things that uh, we have been doing over these uh, uh, months and a lot of successful program, which has gotten a lot of traction. So I welcome any of you who are listening in, want to volunteer, please, um, I would invite you to do so. And uh, with that, uh, I will stop sharing and invite uh, um, Dr. Raj Yavatkar from Juniper Networks to come on screen. Um, but uh, before before I do so, I, uh, he deserves a little bit introduction for especially for folks who have not met him in the Valley. So let's meet uh, Dr. Yavatkar, who is a core engineering person who rose to the C-suite by the sheer dint of his technical strength. He is an alum of two IITs, electronics from BHU, and MTech from IIT Bombay in computer science. And then he completed his PhD in computer science as well from Purdue. He is an IEEE fellow with a wealth of experience in emerging technologies. He is an inventor with over 45 mm -hmm. patents, 60 research papers, which have been published. And uh, he's written uh, five uh, internet standards, also co-authored a book on internet quality of service. In his current role, as the CTO, Chief Technology Officer at Juniper Networks. He is responsible for charting Juniper's technology strategy. He leads and executes the company's critical innovations and products for intelligent self-driving networks, security, mobile edge cloud, network virtualization, pack, packet optical integration, and hybrid cloud. He is a pioneer in technology and products throughout his career. He has envisioned how emerging technologies can be applied to creatively solve enterprise and business problems ahead of competitors to establish new product lines. Before joining Juniper, Dr. Yavatkar was a GCP at, at Google, um, where he led a large team of engineers to deliver cloud network infrastructure solutions for Google Cloud customers. And prior to that, at VMware, where he ideated a new product concept to address the privacy hybrid cloud market. He started his career at Intel, becoming an Intel fellow, the highest technical position that he held for 10 years. And uh, during his various leadership roles there, Raj was responsible for driving new product and R&D initiatives. So 
definitely a very impressive uh, resume and i welcome you raj and uh, raj was also our keynote uh, speaker at our uh, last convention uh, so with that i right, take it away thank you Piyush, that, uh, for such a kind introduction i don't know uh, it was a long time introduction so it reminded me a lot of things so uh, i'm very happy to be here uh, i hope uh, people was uh, questions in the chat window because i would like to make it as interactive as possible uh, uh, so what Piyush asked me to talk about is really what sort of advice you would have for students in all engineering disciplines and i try to uh, really structure the talk around two of those things. One is about the engineering skill set, and the other is soft skills, right? And I'm I'm sure you're going to get a lot better coaching advice and skills, uh, soft skill things from Dilip and Padma, especially Dilip, who I have looked up to to get advice for myself. Uh, but so I will not try to. Uh, I'll try to give only uh, sort of my view of what skills you should focus on. So for any engineer, I believe that before you go into the workforce or even you start working in the workforce, the focus should be, first of all, to establish very strong technical foundations. And by that, I mean you need to focus on both depth and breadth. Depth because you have to be expert in something. You have to go. Is uh, Somebody gave me this analogy of T, T-shape. Think of your own portfolio as T-shape. The top of the T is broad, that's the breadth, and this middle of the T is long and deep, that's your depth. And you need to establish your uh, credentials in both these areas. That's where people tend to make a mistake when they start actually becoming more senior. You need to do that. And depth for students, I say, go beyond your grades. There are lots of examples. You can be getting extremely good grades in your engineering classes, but you know, unless you also go out of your way to find out where the current trends are, uh, where things are going. Uh, for example, if you're a mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, whole area of autonomous vehicle is what I call the uh, the edge of your skill set, where you need to expand and see what's happening there, how do you expand? And one advantage of the internet in the last 30 years has been that there is a lot of material available online, free of charge. Through YouTube, podcast, uh, free uh, documents, open source tools, open uh, tools available. Company like AutoCAD makes tools available uh, to students so that they can play with them. They have, you have to take advantage of that. If you're a computer science student, you, you have a plethora of things available. So that's important to go beyond your grades to see that where do you try to find what you like and go deeper into it. The breadth is very important because that's how you start your career because you don't know where it's going to go. So having the breadth of knowledge is important, which typically comes to the curriculum. But there also, again, you can try to read general articles to understand where the industry is, where things are going and so on. And again, a lot of materials available. I find the podcast, online podcasts, many of them are free, are very uh, easy to uh, access uh, and um, uh, listen to to get information. Uh, most important lesson I'll give as an engineer is that there's no alternative to doing things by hand or playing with them. That means you cannot simply be a theoretical expert. You have to try building things. In any discipline, you should have opportunity to try working with something concrete. Now, in case of, uh, as I said, a lot of free materials available, the courses and other online courses, that also, they have courses which are focused on doing actual projects or assignments, not just listening and learning uh, concepts you should use those available resources to play with them and learn from them and biggest caveat and advice i give especially to indian students i give is the indian students resume come to me all the time i interview students sometimes they're full of buzzwords every buzzword is listed in the resume then you start asking them simple questions and they cannot go beyond the buzzwords they cannot give me a concrete example of oh I have them, I, I know Python 3, I know this, I know machine learning. But if you ask for a concrete example, people come up short. And that's where things fall apart. So having uh, concrete examples and concrete skill sets is important. Don't go for the buzzwords. That will be one advice I would give. No, the, uh, the other part of the career building is that uh, how do you, um, uh, sorry about that. I'm doing it correctly. Um, that uh, you know, any work environment, 
you once you start pursuing it how do you establish some kind of leadership or if nothing else how do you stand out from the crowd those two two things are also important so i have some advice in that area based on my experience which comes by making mistakes so i must tell you that some of the things are then purely by making mistakes one is that you know how do you stand out from the crowd so people who join any junior position after engineering a degree or a curriculum you start out in a junior position as part of a larger team and you have to be very open to feedback and improvement and not everybody is going to be nice to you people will be sometimes very blunt sometimes will pick on you to tell you what the deficiencies are rather than giving you credit for what you done well right being receptive to feedback and improvement is very important even though it comes across as uh, sometimes not very nice right the other way to stand out is that you should try to volunteer to do stuff that nobody else wants to do for example at team meeting i always notice that people who volunteer to write up clear crisp notes and publish them it get attention similarly if there is uh, something missing in the team in terms of infrastructure you can um, uh, try to uh, uh, volunteer to build something an example i'll give it in a minute which is really about in a team to increase the team productivity you can sometimes spend extra time effort to build something some infrastructure some test hardness some tool that can be used by the rest of the team increases the productivity and they start noticing it right it's also important to learn from people who don't think like you when you are in a team environment you'll see that the people who come from a very different background they may have a different education and they think very differently initially it's very easy to dismiss those people saying that oh i don't don't understand what the guy is talking about right or this is completely bizarre but if you go deeper and start having one on one conversations from with that person you'll soon notice that they're coming at it from very different angle and there's a merit to what they're thinking and getting that kind of a feedback understanding is very important that will also make friends with them so that you know you will start getting attention from them and uh, uh, you, you, the other part of this is how do you get attention in the team right sometimes there's a guy or bob in the team who seems to be very effective and everybody goes to him if you are sitting in a cube environment you'll see people walking to his cube asking for his time and so on why does that happen why is bob suddenly so much indispensable because you notice immediately that bob is volunteering to go beyond his individual contributions he's trying to volunteer to do detailed reviews of designs documents implementations when he doesn't have to just being nice and going out of the way he makes constructive suggestions to improve other folks especially junior people he offers to coach junior engineers or he takes initiative to build common infrastructure that the rest of the team can use so in the case of computer science i would say or oh, build a test harness that everybody can reuse don't have to build your own test harness to do testing uh, if you are a, a electrical engineer and are working on a design uh, uh, maybe uh, a chip design you might build this, uh, something that can be used by other people like an ip block that gets uh, or some circuitry uh, like uh, test circuits on a chip are very uh, redundant everybody tries to invent them somebody can go off and build as they may as a modular fashion they can be reused that's one example the other example of standing out from the crowd is how do you show a difference in mindset so an example is this is like a computer science example i'm giving but applicable everywhere even in mechanical engineering civil engineering electrical engineering somebody uh, you write some code or you have a design you create an artifact and reviewer uh, uh, gives you negative feedback so i don't think this is a good idea now one one way to react to that is that simply react to that saying that this is not constructive i'm not going to uh, pay attention to that or you try to be defensive and say oh i have an explanation i did it this way because my boss told me to do that that's the member of a technical staff who that shows avoidance of responsibility you're shifting the responsibility to your boss not taking responsibility for your own work or you cannot justify your own work for example that should you have big technical skills because you should be able to explain to that person why did you do it this way why why did you design it this way right or um, you are also creating work for your boss which is never a good thing right boss doesn't want to have to intervene and try to do work for you because then he has to negotiate with the person who is objecting to uh, the code and so on more senior person who take a different point of view they might come back with when constructive to engage with that person to say why do you think this is a bad design this is supposed to do x what do you suggest instead do you disagree with the goal that i'm trying to achieve or the implementation 
this kind of interaction can really show a difference in mindset that can help you grow uh, your skills as well as your soft skills how you interact with people how do you become impactful and so on can this show this kind of approach that you're taking responsibility for your own work you're not creating new work for your boss you are resolving the issue with a peer immediately that's very important finally i think how do you impress your boss with the upward moment upward career mobility is all about being looked upon as a very uh, the, uh, above average or extraordinary person in the team and for that you have to impress your boss or manager so one of the things you have to understand in any manager of a team which is manage large team they do not want a lot of issues to come to them they do not want to intervene they would like you to take care of any problems solve them their their job is easier and they are doing a lot of other things such as they dealing with finance hr they might be dealing with their peers peer organization slicing the work for their own team versus other there are lots of things that we the last thing they want is one of the team members creating new work for them uh, where they have to resolve the conflict and so on it's perfectly okay by the way uh, when you work with uh, uh, in an environment for a project to fail and good bosses expect some failures they will not punish you for that more uh, importantly great bosses have backup plans so something goes wrong they will be able to uh, resolve those or correct the uh, course but it's not okay for the failure to be a complete surprise so you have to keep always your boss or manager or your management chain informed so don't try to give them positive reports every week and suddenly there's a last minute failure you should be very upfront and open about the problems you see while you are making progress so even if you write a weekly report summary report you should write what you have achieved what progress you made but what issues you see which could come back to uh, bite you later on. and this is how the middle managers many times get fired because they do not keep the management informed about the real challenges try to give a very positive picture that's something important to them any questions so far i don't see any questions in the chat window it always helps to have questions and be more interactive so feel free to uh, post the questions in the chat window finally the last section i want to really want to talk about is soft skills you need to have so one of the skills that especially i used to be a professor uh, where i used to get lots of indian students asian students and one of the challenges i had was uh, teaching them what i learned the hard way how to be a good presenter especially when you come from a foreign country you have a heavy accent you speak too fast people have hard time understanding and you have to present in front of a group of people what are the presentation skills you must acquire so i came up with these three p's that i have taught presentation skills classes now uh, in couple of other companies um, where most importantly is the pace at which you deliver you must come up with a pace that is mm. really consumable by your audience so don't try to rush through uh, your presentation don't try to rush through your sentences but try to pace yourself and while pacing yourself the other piece pause make sure you pause in between take the reaction from the audience see whether they're following maybe a query them for questions make it as interactive as possible and pauses help you really get a good understanding are people are completely lost to you or they are keeping up with you and finally the pitch intonation is very important you have to be energy you have to project energy that gets transferred to the audience that means your pitch should be intonation should go up and down not be monotonous so people fall asleep right and if you're signing in from the audience this part of the pitch is also a moment if you're moving around you show energy that energy gets transferred so those are the three pieces of the good presentation skill there are lots of other things people will tell you but i think those are three the most important that i found very useful over the time finally another important skill for any technical person is but it's general uh, any anywhere is that uh, uh, influencing and stakeholder management we work in an environment where working with other human beings there is always issues of rivalry people wanting to get credit take credit you are looking to share credit and i think a lot of the engineers lack this influence with how to influence others so that they are in your corner they are part of we start becoming your supporter and how do you manage stakeholders by stakeholders i mean your boss your peers people who are below you or you in the organization in terms of at least uh, skill sets and grade level 
all of those people are your stakeholders and you have to manage those stakeholders in terms of what image you create and what personality is projected so people identify you in certain way that's very important to grow in your career as you want to become bigger and bigger leader people decide whether you are acceptable or not based on how well you influence them how do you do stakeholder management and i believe that this is the single most important skill needed anywhere in any discipline, any uh, job uh, ladder you are. And many indigenous or aspiring leaders struggle with this and learning how to influence others is very important. So some examples how to do that. You should always be approaching others for feedback. You should be approaching most senior people to become your mentors. Remember, if you approach anybody in humility, asking, can you be my mentor? People feel really good. They will uh, uh, rarely say no. And you get a time with them, say once a quarter, once a month, doesn't matter. It might be 30 minutes. But that time you have to use very carefully with respect to using that time to uh, share with them challenges you face, what you want to uh, do, what you want to achieve in your career, and gain their input and make them one of the people who will start advocating for you. Similarly, your peers, you need to engage with them uh, rather than creating a competition or, uh, or uh, uh, tension, sometimes it's important to share credit, right? If you have an idea, if you discuss with somebody and then decide to go for file pattern, don't forget that you discuss with somebody and that time including them in your patent uh, uh, invention disclosure is very important or any project you are doing it. Be very generous with respect to giving others credit, share credit, recognizing their achievement when you are not doing so well. All these are part of the stakeholder. And if for junior people, it's important for you to take time to go and mentor them, find or reach out to them to help them because they are the ones we look up to you. And when a time comes, they will jump in and make some project happen, even if they have to work through the weekend and so on. So I think this is a, one of the most important uh, 360 degrees uh, kind of uh, skill in terms of how you manage your 360s, upward, sideways and downward. That you should learn. Part of the influencing skill is that how do you document and communicate? How do you write documents? How do you communicate in email, on a Slack channel, on in a, nowadays in a Teams environment because a lot of the things are virtual. People don't see uh, each other face to face. And you form perceptions about the people in a virtual environment. Today, after the first time in the last three years, uh, two and a half years in this company, I met somebody who I have only seen on uh, Zoom calls, or uh, Teams calls. And you know, sometimes you have perception, this person is actually very tall. I thought he was a very short guy. Um, but you know, you form all kinds of perceptions in the virtual environment. It's important that you communicate in a way that you establish bonds with people, don't make assumptions, right? And I think you, uh, rather than pointing out mistakes, it's important to be able to show by example. So for example, sometimes somebody brings a piece of work completed to you, it's not complete. Maybe they're junior, they have not done it. You can show them an example by which what does it mean to be complete. That's better than just criticizing them because giving them constructive suggestion, showing them example helps. They'll remember that. The other is how another way to influence others is through reviews, right? Outside of your job scope, if you take time to review other people's work, give them feedback, they'll appreciate it and they'll remember it. And that's part of influencing them to make them you a stakeholder, but also your support or your advocate in different situations. So those are some examples of how to go about influencing others and stakeholder management. With that, I'm going to stop and take questions because I don't want this to be one way. So uh, any questions? By the way, from anybody in the audience, including you know Dilip, you or other people who are here on the call, I'll be glad to have questions come from you or Piyush yeah, Padma. Thanks, Raj. I don't see any audience questions, so I'll just get. St oh, okay. So I there think is one. there's one question. So uh, Sri Devi is asking, what are some good bookkeeping practices? Bookkeeping practices. Is that mean documentation? Because bookkeeping is a very accounting term. I didn't quite understand yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would say, you know, uh, I, I'll just share my experience. Uh, career journal, basically. Uh, as you are progressing uh, every week, accomplishments of the week, uh, you should document. And uh, you know, okay, as you are planning for the next week, what are the top five things that you would want to, to accomplish? 
And then over a period of time, you will see by the end of the year, you will have everything in your Google Doc or wherever you are documenting this, and you'll have it easily available to you to write your um, uh, personal assessment. So um, that, would, that would be my tip. And that's what I believe uh, Sri Devi wanted as well. So yeah. uh, one question uh, does pop up um, in my mind, uh, Raj, is uh, that, you know, bulk of our audience today is uh, youth who, uh, this for them, it might be their first uh, job. And there's always a bit of anxiety when you are about to take on your first job. And uh, when they don't know what to expect, what kind of political environment would be. So there is a nuance when you are uh, totally a fresher versus when you are a middle uh, manager or, or an executive. So you want to emphasize on how you, in your own career, uh, pivoted or, or what strategies you changed as you rose up the ranks? Yeah, that's a good question. I made lots of mistakes, I must tell you. So I can now tell you what mistakes not to make. <laughs> because I don't want to claim that I'm new. So I think when I'm new and completely new, it's important to, um, first of all, be a lot more humble than you would expect. Me. No matter what degree you have, what um, accomplishments you already have. Start with humility and try to seek out some people who are more senior, uh, who tend to be quieter. Uh, there's a reason they're quieter. I think they're observing. And there are a lot more to contribute, but they do not show. And if you go to them, you will find that they're those people, as I said, if you approach somebody and say, can you be my mentor? Can you be my coach? People feel flattered. They would definitely come out of the shell and do that. Doing that is very important. The other thing is being very observant, right, around you. Because when you are new, you are going to make mistakes. So it's always good to ask for feedback before people even point out your mistakes. And that really helps to build upon it. So I think that's uh, one thing I would really suggest to people. That's great. Um, be ready to make mistakes, ask for feedback, and ask for others to mentor you. So guys, you heard it from the best of the best. You heard how impressive Raj's resume was when I read uh, in the beginning. Uh, and I realized many of you hadn't joined by then, especially the Dallas folks, where I can now see the room full of people. But you guys can catch up on the recording. So don't worry on that account. Uh, so with that, I think I will have to say thanks to Raj. Please stick on for the networking, Raj, if you can. Yeah. What we will do is now we'll move to the career coaches section. And for that, uh, first, I want to invite uh, Dilip Saraf, who is LinkedIn's number one career coach. He has reinvented himself six times. He is an IIT graduate, and I'm not going to read his bio. He when he starts speaking, it speaks for itself. So welcome with folded hands. Dilip, you are muted right now. Please unmute yourself and come on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Piyush. I appreciate the introduction. So let me uh, get back to my uh, deck here. And let's see, unmute yourself. Okay, so what I want to talk about today is somewhat complementary to what you heard from Raj, and that is how do you do this from the right, from the left side of your brain to right side of the brain. Left side is when you uh, are logical, analytical, and that's what helps you during your graduation. But once you come out, you have to turn on your right side of the brain. And I'm gonna talk about how to use that to develop stories and get people's attention through storytelling. So that's what this is all about. And let's see how we can get to that and understand what storytelling is all about. So we all grew up listening to stories about Ramayana and about Ten Commandments and about all the heroes from the past. And we enjoyed them as we were growing up. But what we find is, as we get adults in our professional life, we somehow lose touch with that storytelling and story listening approach. And I don't know why that happens because something comes in the way of understanding what storytelling is all about. And I always tell people, storytelling is very easy for those who don't know how to tell it. And that's why what I say to people is learn how to tell stories, learn how to tell your own story. And it's the story that we not tell others, but the story that we tell ourselves that are important. 
and just think about the power of that. And if you tell yourself the right stories, it will change the way you view yourself. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So part of the secret of storytelling goes back about 2000 years, Aristotle and Plato's time, when they came up with a six element framework for storytelling, and that has not changed. That has not changed. It's the same storytelling structure that we're going to talk about. And what I'm going to show you here is the biggest story that came out as a movie franchise, and that is the Star Wars trilogy, and maybe it's even more than that. And the structure for that story is the same that I'm going to use for writing your resume stories and the stories you're going to tell during your interview. And I'm going to show you what that structure is. So let me see if I can get my pointer here. Uh, pointer options, laser pointer. Okay, so the start is the character, which is you, the hero. You are the hero of your story and your resume. The hero has a problem. He's looking for some avenue that allows him to solve the problem. In this case, it's the master Jedi that he's looking to get the inspiration from. And the Jedi tells him to trust the force. I don't know if you remember the Star Wars uh, storyline, but that's basically the three elements so far. This is the fourth element. And the fifth element is defeat the empire, defeat the evil empire. And that's the Darth Vader that he's fighting. And number six is either you conquer the adversary or you avoid failure. Either one of those is the number six element. So this is how the structure of any story you take any story, Hollywood blockbuster to drama to a novel, it's the same story. And I want you to learn how to translate that into a story that you tell on your resume, which is probably the hardest thing to do. Because in a movie, there is plenty of time in a resume, you have two or three lines to tell your story. And that's why it's one of the hardest challenges that people face. So let's look at where are the typical use cases of the story, right? Your life story, you can tell in a novel, you can tell in a blog, you can tell in whatever. Your escapades, what are some adventurous things you did even in your professional life or your personal life or whatever. You can tell that in a, in a talk or whatever. A blockbuster movie is a typical use case of a great story. Now it gets difficult. When you get into a job interview, you have limited time to tell a variety of stories that are all linked together that create a coherent leadership narrative. A leadership narrative is a collection of your stories that have a degree of coherence to it. These are not like a smorgasbord or things thrown around together, but these are carefully selected leadership stories that when they're pulled together in a single resume, people say, wow, you know, this kind of a, a very strong leader who has a lot of impact in how they do what they do. And even harder is how you do that on a resume. Because in your case, especially those who just graduated, you have maybe one page, no more than two pages. And how do you tell those stories in a couple of pages or maybe even one page, a number of stories that creates the intrigue, that creates the impact, and that makes people go, wow, how did he do that? Or how did she do that? And if you leave that element of intrigue during your narrative in the resume, you are in, and I'll tell you a story of a recent graduate that we did exactly that. And so this triangle shows you when you're able to write and narrate such stories, it increases your awareness of your own leadership only by writing those stories. You accept your superpower as your own, and you appreciate the kind of value you bring to what you're targeting. And that's what leads you to actualization. So this is my own graphic that tells you how writing a great story brings all of these four A's together to make you actualize where you want to go with it. So let's come back to the resume part. We talk about the Star Wars part. Now the harder part is how do you do that in a resume? So the six element structure that we talked about is here delineated in the six boxes. What is the situation that is confronting you? You are the hero of the story. What is the impediment? What is the barrier that the hero wants to conquer? Just like the Star Wars, it's exactly the same framework. What validates the hero's conquest? What are the measurements that are business related 
that when the hero, that's you, conquers it, you made the conquest. What is the plan? How do you propose? How do you meet Obi-Wan Kenobi? How do you become a master Jedi? That's the plan that you develop. Leverage is what is your secret sauce, what I call your genius. What is your genius? And we all have it. Nobody can say that I don't have the genius. We just don't use that term in a way that helps us. Trust me, we all have our genius. And when you engage your genius in what you do, you create an aha. So what is that secret sauce? What is that superpower that emanates from your own genius? That's what captures the story. And the effect one is you conquered it. Effect two is you avoided a failure. Either one of those is the sixth element. So that's the reality you will face when you're crafting your resume. And it's much harder, <laughs> trust me, than writing a blockbuster movie uh, script because you have very limited time and space and, and to make an impact. So now let's talk about an actual example that is worthy of a resume. Let's talk about a story of shipments damaged in transit. So the situation, we're gonna go through the six elements and the situation is shipments are damaged. Impediment is we don't know from the eight or 10 transit points where it is happening and I don't know where to focus on to make the correction. Measurement is, Currently, it's 65% of the shipment is damaged. I want it to be less than 5%. What is the plan? My plan is to use the 80-20 rule to find out where is the 80% of the damage coming from 20% of the transit points. The other rule you can use is five, six, seven. Which 5% of the transit points give you 67% of the damage? That's the other formula I sometimes use. What is the leverage? And here I tell you, a story has to have a leverage or a point where you flip things by doing things of something imaginative. And I'll tell you how we did that in this particular example. And the effect is what is the outcome? So now let's look at how it looks on a resume before and after. Most people, 99.9% .9 of the people write the first bullet, reduce incidence of damaged shipments from 65% to 5% in one month. That's the bullet most people write. But the story that you want to tell is this, the one based on this six element structure. Uncovered that 65% of the incoming shipments came damaged, costing 23,500 in scrap goods. Took charge and found that greater than 80% of the damage occurred in one transit point and teamed up with the transit manager and changed the handling equipment. And what flips here, what makes you conquest, conquer this impediment is you went to the maker of the manufacturer, manufacturer of the equipment, and asked them to loan the equipment, and if it works, we're gonna spread that equipment's brand around everybody that gets shipment from, whoever gets the shipment from. In other words, loaning this maker, getting this maker to loan you the equipment was the flipping point, was the, was the resolution of the story. And trained handlers, within just few months, less than two months, it stopped any damage, leaving only 5% due to random events, saving $22,750. So you can see how these four lines captures a story that makes you the hero of the story. And this is one of the things I want you to learn how to write based on that six element framework. We are at 10 minutes here. And this is the point I want to make, that the critical story elements are these that I told you. But the biggest point is not just have a ramp up of your buildup of the narrative, but you have to be able to flip something that people say, how did you do that? And then it gets to resolution, which is where you become, you, you conquer your, your obstacle. Okay, now let's talk about what leadership narrative is. I'm not gonna go through this because we have limited time. You can read this when you see this on YouTube. And the same thing is building your narrative, as I was saying before, to have these coherent stories, not just random stories, coherent stories that bring together your leadership force in a single narrative. Narrative is a collection of stories that you own. And that's one of the hardest things. It's like editing of the movie. They shoot movies somewhat randomly, but it's the editing that brings the story together in the movie. So I want you to understand how to build this narrative in your resume. Okay, so now let's talk about what Raj was telling you about. I wanna tell you somewhat graphically. 
On this picture here that I'm showing you, this hexagon, your entire focus through your academic life was on the left side, which is the logical brain that you carry, which you use to educate, to inform, to analyze, all of that stuff. You hardly ever use your <laughs> left, uh, right brain. And the right brain is the one that gives you the social connection, what we call EQ. And the elements of that are inspired and you can't inspire others until you yourself are inspired. Think about that. How do you engage people with the story that you tell? And how you challenge them with what you can do for them? So what I want you to think about as you go from the left side of your brain to the right side of the brain to exercise that is to learn how to go from the left side to the right side. And that's how you connect with people. You can see the brain and the heart. You want to connect with heart, you want to analyze with your brain. Okay, now it comes to one of the things that will happen during an interview is people will ask you, tell me about yourself. This is an actual example. I had a client who just graduated from North Carolina State and we crafted this, tell me about yourself, less than two minutes, actually it takes about 110 seconds. And he applied for three jobs in three companies, not just because of that, but this is always the first question they ask you, tell me about yourself. It does about 100, five seconds or so to say it, the top part is the left brain part, the bottom part is the right brain part. I make mean chicken curry, I play cricket and all of that. So you're connecting with the people. And as I was telling you, this person who just graduated, applied for three companies, Amazon, Cisco, and one other company, and he got all three jobs. Not because of this tell me about yourself statement, but coming across this way sets the tone of what kind of a leadership you bring to the company. And this guy, the result was able to get all three jobs. So with that, I'm gonna to say to you, go get that job you want. Any question? Hello? Hello? Yes. Uh, did, did I I'm lose everybody? Kidding. Hello? No, no, we can oh, okay. hear you. Okay, any, any questions uh, either from the audience or anybody else? Not, not yet. So, okay. ex yeah. excellent presentation, uh, <clears throat> Dilip, as usual. Um, uh, there are a lot of, lot of folks who are just joining in. I believe there was some glitch with the Zoom uh, they, they had. But anyways, um, why don't you stick on? What I'm asking is to be eligible for the prizes and giveaways. Uh, we will uh, want uh, your uh, questions to be posted in the chat window, as well as uh, feel free to network with others by posting your LinkedIn profile here. And uh, um, Dilip, uh, stay on if, as long as you can. And when, I can stay on. I can stay on. Yeah. When we finish the, with the presentations, then we'll get to the networking portion. And once again, as a reminder, there are corporate partners and sponsors here. We would uh, want uh, the students to freely network with the ASCII board members, as well as uh, the sponsors. So there'll be rooms that uh, Vasla has created and we will um, march over there. But before that, we still have uh, one more career coach uh, to hear from. And since we are talking about LinkedIn, it is a very- I see they like poop. Uh, I met uh, Padma on a social media platform, and uh, uh, that's what he will be talking about. So, uh, without much further ado, uh, Padma, welcome. Oh my gosh, I... Thank you, Pikesh. All right, go ahead and take it away. Okay, a certified career coach, and uh, I have been helping people from eight plus years in their career, finding their dream career, especially and to be happy with what you're actually doing. So I moved to Canada in 2012 and um, I'm an Indo-Canadian as well. And the first thing what I found it really hard is fitting in, trying to fit in with this new culture, with this new work etiquettes and how to build your networking because the whole networking concept here and in India is kind of a little bit different. So since then I decided that along with my full-time job, I also established my career coaching online business where I do online career consultations with people and help them to find jobs, especially immigrants. 
I usually concentrate more on immigrants. So with that, today we are talking mostly about the LinkedIn optimization. In this new digital era, it's very, very important that you utilize that platform. And I'm just going to share my presentation here. Um, okay. I hope everybody can see this. <clears throat> yeah. So today we are talking about LinkedIn optimization. So LinkedIn is basically, I always tell people that when you build your resume, you try to build your resume to get a job, but you need to try to build your resume to get an interview, not a job. So if you are from India, you know how the arranged marriage works, right? So the resume and the job description are the two horoscopes. They don't guarantee you the marriage. They guarantee you the personal meetup if they, the skills matches. And then you meet each other, which is like an interview. And then you decide whether you want to go ahead and marry that person or not. And same thing happens in the interview where you want to join the company and the company decides whether they want to hire you or not. But LinkedIn is an online platform. This is like a matrimony.com, which is also equally important these days, especially in this digital era. And in my next slide, I want to talk about why LinkedIn is most important. I saw in the chat someone mentioned why LinkedIn is important these days. So here are the reasons. The first one is more than 95% recruiters. From the data, we see that more than 95% of the recruiters go through your LinkedIn right after receiving your resume or you approach them. In person, if you go and approach them in a career fair or if you are approaching them online by sending them a message, or even if you apply for a job, the moment they receive your communication, the first thing the recruiters, 95% and more recruiters, first thing they do is go to your LinkedIn profile. So I have two important things. First, having the LinkedIn profile, updated LinkedIn profile will increase your interview calls drastically. It makes a huge, huge difference. And the second thing is, if you cannot put that effort to update your LinkedIn, then just don't have a LinkedIn. The worst thing is to have is undone, like half done LinkedIn, where the recruiters go to your LinkedIn and they see that you haven't even updated anything. So <clears throat> it's very important to put that extra effort and update your LinkedIn, which is very, very important, especially in this digital era. And the second important thing is networking. Networking through LinkedIn is very, very powerful as it concentrates on professional networking. Now, in a, LinkedIn is also a social media now. It's no more just like a strictly professional platform because LinkedIn also has creator mode. <clears throat> if you go on Facebook and Instagram, we do not hesitate to post, hey guys, I'm here. I'm on this vacation. I'm on this beach, etc. But when it comes to updating our LinkedIn, we become hesitant. But that is where we need to concentrate our efforts more because it concentrates on the professional networking where which gives you valuable connections where you can build your brand and do more many things and that uh, takes me to my next point which in linkedin you can build your brand how do you build your brand on linkedin when you update your linkedin then you follow certain people you build your connections then you comment on their postings where other people of their connections if they are watching through that post they will see your comments and they'll see hmm this person has commented so well and uh, they'll come and visit your profile and see how you're doing and what is your background. And also you can post articles or you can create your own articles and post some other news, news articles or etc. on your LinkedIn post, which your connections will see and kind of gauge what kind of character do you have. And also another point is you can research companies and its employees. For example, if you are applying for Microsoft, and uh, your role is say in AI or animation. And then you go on the Microsoft and you search that role. And then you see all the people in Microsoft in that role. And then you see their job description. They, some Most of the people or some people will update their current role and what they do in that role. You go through the job description and see what they are doing in day-to-day -day life. That kind of gives you a more detailed picture of the company and the roles and their employees. And LinkedIn also helps you to rank your name on Google because LinkedIn is one of the most sorted platform when it comes to professional networking. So it helps you having a good LinkedIn profile helps you to rank your name on Google. And the last point, which I'm going through the next slide and I will explain that again is LinkedIn headline. There is your name comes on the, your picture, your name comes on the LinkedIn below that is a headline. 
where you can add as many, there is like a one liner space where you can add, for example, you have a Python, SQL or Java, and you're applying for a job which is relevant to those skills, you can put those in there. Because what headline does is it is Google and LinkedIn searchable. If a recruiter is headhunting or looking for someone with these skills, all they can do is type these skills and it pulls up the profile who have mentioned these skills on their headline. So headline is LinkedIn and Google searchable. So always using that is very, very important for you and increases your chance. With that, um, uh, please feel free to post your questions on the chat box. And in my last slide, I will share how to connect with me as well. And important fields on LinkedIn. When I go through this slide, it's very difficult to see where this topic comes in on the LinkedIn. So after we go through this slide, I'm gonna take you on a field trip on my LinkedIn profile and show you how these uh, things works. So first is please, please, please have a professional picture. You have no idea how many people, more than 50% of clients that I guide and career coach online still have had their vacation picture or surfing picture or some kind of traveling picture. If you are a travel blog blogger, then that's a different story. Otherwise, please have a professional headshot picture on your LinkedIn. Hey guys, it's Quandale Dingle here. I have been arrested for multiple crimes, wow. including battery on a police officer. What? And the second thing in is public indecency. I will be escaping prison on March 28th. After that, I will take. Give us a second. Uh... No, remove the person. Okay. So the second, again, the headline, which is Google and LinkedIn searchable and where it comes, I'll show you on my own LinkedIn profile. And about section, after your picture headline comes and then comes the about section, which is like an objective when you put it on your resume. Make it three to five lines and precise and to the point. And that three to four line small paragraph should showcase your passion, what value you are bringing to the team. And you can change it according to what kind of role at what life stage you are looking for. It, it doesn't have to be like a permanent one thing. And next comes the experience. I know as Piyush mentioned, most of the people might be a fresher. This is your first job. You don't know what to put it in experience because you don't have work experience. ASCI, yes, yeah, so I get and in that case, you can put your student works, or if you have done any internship, you can put those in your experience. And if you're already experienced, then you can put your previous experiences, but make sure that the most important experience on each that jobs, you have the most important experience on the top bullet points in each role. It's the same role as your resume, and I'll show you how on my LinkedIn profile. And next comes pretty straightforward education, what education you had and everything. And then comes license and certifications, which is also pretty straightforward. You have Python, Java, or whatnot certifications. You can put it in there. And then comes the volunteering. Trust me, if most of the people I believe are from United States and in Canada, United States, overall North America, the community involvement is a huge deal because that shows your people skills. For example, if you are part of ASEI and if you have volunteered for ASEI or if you are participating in some of the activities, you can put that on your volunteering section and you can tag ASEI profile in there. And that way that will give you a credibility. And volunteering shows people skills. People skill means you are good with communication. And if you are good with communication, you will be good with business development. That means generating revenue, bringing business to the companies. The more lucrative you showcase yourself to the companies, the more chances you are going to get for the jobs. And the next section comes into picture is skills. Skills on the LinkedIn, you can add whatever skills you think you have. For example, if you're a banker, you can add cash handling experience, loans, investments, et cetera. Customer service skills like that. Or if you can add Microsoft, Python, Java, SQL, et cetera. And Another best thing on LinkedIn is if you click on skills, I'll show you on my profile, you can take skill assessment tests from LinkedIn. They give you around 15 questions. And if you are one of the top 30 scorers, they will validate your skill. The LinkedIn will validate your skill. That kind of gives you more credibility on your LinkedIn profile. And the last but not the least is recommendations. On LinkedIn, you can actually ask for recommendations from your connections. If you work with them to just to give a positive feedback about yourself, or you can also give recommendation to other people. 
recommendations are basically like reference check for the employers. And if there are good recommendations on your profile, then technically when the recruiter sees your profile, they're actually cross-checking the reference as well because it's pretty much like a reference check. And with that, I'm gonna stop sharing this one and I'm gonna go through all these picture headline about experience on my personal LinkedIn profile. And then we will come back here. That's mine. Okay, so if everybody can see, this is my LinkedIn profile, okay? So as I said, first picture, have a headshot, which is very professional. Unless you are a travel blogger or YouTuber, that's a whole different story. So then this is a headline where I say career coach, career mentor, resume, interview, network, wealth planner, financial planning. That is my other job. And how that comes is when you click on this edit button, when you go to your profile on the LinkedIn, this is how pretty much it looks like for everyone. And then you click on this edit button and it pops up this window where you can, your first name, last name, everything comes here, your pronouns, if you wanna go she, her, him, they, whatnot. And then comes the headline. That is where, this is very, very important. Please make the best use of it. You can put your Java, SQL, all kind of things that you have, which are relevant for the jobs that you're looking for. I put career coach, career mentor, resume interview. If anybody looking with these keywords, my resume, uh, my LinkedIn profile is gonna pop up. And this is just a career, current position and everything. So this is where you change that headline. And then comes the objective. The more you scroll down, you get this section called about me about me when you click on edit you can change it as i said make it three to in between three to five lines make it precise and focusing on what value you can bring into the people's life and then comes the experience as i said my wealth planner career coach for example if i see on my wealth planner wealth planning is i do take care of i do wealth planning for people but i also mentor and coach a team of wealth planners or wealth relationship managers if i'm applying for a job which is coaching and mentoring then i put those experience on the top bullet points like this if i'm talking or i'm applying for a job which is more advanced to financial planning but doesn't involve mentoring and everything then i do these points on the top if i'm applying for those jobs so you can do up and down based on what kind of jobs you're applying for and this is about experience. When you cross the experience, pretty straightforward, you have education where you can mention where you did your education, what kind of education you have. And here comes all the certifications, license and certifications, where you can mention what all the certifications you have. And after that, oh, sorry about that. You go back to your Zoom profile, uh, sorry, your LinkedIn profile. And okay, we came back to my profile and when we go down, it's just taking some time to upload. Okay, and then comes license and certification. Uh, we talked until that point. And then comes just the volunteering. This is where I said, if you are involved in ASEI or something else, mention them, tag them here, then it will show ASEI page. So that way it gives you more credibility about volunteering and skills. This is where skills are important. You click on skills, then you can add skills. And if you click on demonstrate skills here, you can take skill assessment. It says answer 15 multiple choice questions scored in the top 30% and earn a skill badge. That is like a LinkedIn validating you. And after that, Oh, it came back all the way up and after skills there is a last point which is recommendations if you click on plus sign it shows you whether you can ask for recommendation or give recommendation if you click one of these it will give you a list of your connections and then you can choose who you want to give recommendation or who you want to ask recommendation from and the more recommendations you have the better for you as well it kind of increases your credibility and with that i'm going to stop sharing this point and uh, I know with the time sensitivity, I'm just sharing the last slide I have, and then we'll go from there. Okay. So this is the last slide. Where can you find me? So technically, I did make this presentation a very smaller one, so you don't get confused. 
and first thing first you guys are you guys are welcome to send me a back channel or a direct message with as many questions as you have. I'll try my best to answer everyone. So you can find me on LinkedIn as you saw my profile. I go by Padma Shri or Padma Kulkarni. And on Clubhouse, Instagram and TikTok, I go by Learn with Padma. That is my business name and that is the name that I go from all, on all my social media platforms. And on Clubhouse, I conduct weekly group career coaching sessions where Piyush will be there. Piyush is uh, um, very, very supportive on my club and uh, there are other people as well who join and support me. And there are many people who seek for advice. So my next week is like salary negotiation. How you do you negotiate your salary? And uh, next to next week is LinkedIn optimization. We have one, one and a half hour session that we do, do uh, dive deeper into the LinkedIn and etc and interview questions things like that we cover so that is a weekly every Monday at 12 p.m PST I conduct uh, group career coaching sessions on Clubhouse which is an audio app and uh, TikTok I do conduct I do post every day small content about uh, career coaching so feel free to join there as well so thank you so much Piyush and ASEI for inviting me um, and other thing is you guys are on the land of opportunities. So just go be comfortable with being uncomfortable. So don't worry about failures. Failing is fine as long as you're not repeating the same mistakes. So go out there and uh, rock the world. Thank you so much. Thank you, Padma. And uh, you know, Padma mentioned uh, TikTok and, uh, but I would say for uh, specifically for the purpose of getting a job, make sure you stick to one platform. LinkedIn is it where uh, most of the recruiters, um, more than 95% recruiters are looking at your profile, your complete persona, not only your resume, but also whatever commenting you are doing, what kind of articles you are posting. So it's very important to build a personal brand on LinkedIn. And if you are having any publications, research, yeah, conference participation, feel free to share and be generous with that. And I would say, for the students who may not have a large resume, it's not the length of resume that is important. It is how well you demonstrate your social skills, your soft skills, as well as your technical skills uh, in front of the world. Today, uh, social platforms are the stage. Uh, Padma mentioned Clubhouse, and I want to give a plug to, uh, there are a couple of uh, really great uh, audio social audio clubs there, including ASCI's uh, Engineering Tales uh, Club, which has about 1.3 k um, members. And uh, you know, uh, if you can join those, great. Otherwise, focus on getting a job first, and then uh, follow Padma, uh, follow Dilip, and uh, follow any of us who are here in ASCI. But more importantly, follow the ASCI page, and you'll get all the updates from us. With that, uh, thank you, Padma. Stay on for the networking. I want to get to the corporate section. I know we are running a bit late because of the disruptions and uh, technical difficulties, but I want to get to the corporate section where we will. Uh, uh, so our, our sponsors uh, and supporters, Jennifer Networks, Emerson, and Veridic Solutions, and O'Reilly. Uh, there are book prizes and door prizes to be won, gift cards courtesy Veridic. So uh, please uh, follow through. And there is a sign up sheet here with which you'll be able to get those prizes. And I want to get very quickly to our next uh, presenter. So, um, uh, Smita, you are there. Wonderful being here. I've enjoyed all the conversations. So, um, Piyush asked me to talk a little bit about some of the opportunities at Emerson. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Emerson. Um, we are a Fortune 500 company and um, we are an engineering and technology company. So to say we have engineering jobs is, um, would be telling the truth because we have so many different types of jobs. Um, it can be a control engineering, an engineer co coordinator, product development engineer, embedded firmware engineer. Um, the business is made up of lots of businesses. So the best way to see where a job is, is actually to go to Emerson Careers. Um, no one recruiter or no one person would be able to tell you what jobs you have. Any given time, we have approximately 2000 jobs in the system. So if you are reaching out to someone like me, um, reach out with a job number. Don't say, hey, do you have a job for me? I'm an engineer. Because that just um, 
really is, is so vague. Um, go to the site, um, look at the locations. We're a global company, so we have a lot of jobs throughout the world, not just the US. Um, we are looking for different types of engineers. So there are opportunities for new grads and experienced ones. Um, one of my favorite programs is an engineers and leadership program that we have um, that picks about 16 students each year. Um, it's a two year rotational program. It is very elite, very difficult to get in, but it gives um, engineering students the opportunity to work um, for, with us in an assignment for two years. One year is in the US and one is overseas. So that's a great program. But generally, um, that's what I really wanted to share. There, there are so many opportunities at Emerson um, and we really need um, students, anyone who's interested to really look at the website and see what careers there are and perhaps even send you some reminders so you can set yourself up so you're alerted to job opportunities that come up. Thank you, Smita. Smita is an HR business partner from Emerson. And from Emerson, we have one more person uh, from a, uh, who is not here right now, but we recorded a session with him uh, a little bit earlier. Can you see the screen? Yes, please. Go ahead. Hey guys, let's meet Sam Ladwa, who is a vice president at Emerson, and he has been involved with ASCI for a number of years. He's been serving on the national board as well. Welcome, Sam. Good afternoon. How's it going? Uh, awesome. Talk about uh, your involvement with uh, Emerson and then uh, how Emerson and ASCI have been partnering in the past. Okay, so I've been with Emerson for about 30 years. Okay, uh, I currently am the vice pre area vice president for Emerson in the Western region, but it goes all, all the way down to Southwest, including Louisiana, so more than half the country. Um, I've been uh, associated with the ASCI for close to about 10 years, and um, I didn't realize how great uh, the individuals within ASCI organization were, um, not just you know, people with engineering background, but people who are willing to help. And uh, I'm a recipient of that in the sense that uh, I was able to hire three people from ASCI and um, all three of them are top notch. Okay, if you were to ask anybody in my organization, okay, those three people would be right at the top. So uh, thank you for doing that. Appreciate that from the bottom of my heart on behalf of Emerson. Wonderful, Sam. This is a great partnership we've had and a long-standing one too. Why don't you talk a little bit, give the attendees a flavor about your job. You used to be an aeronautical engineer at one point, and then how did you get into sales and what did you do today? Okay. So uh, being an aerospace engineer, you know, you'd think that uh, you'd be behind the desk. And uh, I never thought, um, you know, when I get out, got out of college, never thought that I'd be behind the desk. Okay, I tried it for a year, uh, working for Northrop, realized that that's not what I want to do. And uh, one fine day, I called uh, an ad. In those days, we didn't have internet or anything. It was LA Times, and called an ad, and uh, my boss at the time, uh, who hired me, answered the phone, and we started talking and uh, got into sales, and didn't even had inkling I was going to be a salesman. Uh, but then realized that, you know, that is an awesome path. Uh, any new engineers, uh, aspiring engineers, should not think of sales as something demeaning because we all need it. Great. So, you know, this is a great example for all the students listening in that what you study in college is good to get started with, but you have to be adaptable, you have to be agile, and you've got to listen for the signals on the market at, and, and what you hear and what you learn from your seniors and go along. And you are a prime example of you're a successful person with 30 years with a single company. It's a rare example of continuing with the same uh, organization. So this is your dedication to Emerson. And of course, from ASCI side, um, I've known you since you were the ASCI SoCal president at one point. That's when we first met. And uh, thank you for the partnership. 
Thank you for being here. And thank you for all your support, Suresh. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Uh, Raj spoke uh, about uh, his experiences earlier. But Ben is uh, an HR partner from Juniper. Please come on. Hello, all. Um, thank you so much for having us. Um, my name is Ben, and I'm here with my, Ro uh, my teammates, Romy and Hong, from Juniper's University Talent Program team. Uh, we are honored to be here, um, and, and we love meeting with students. I know that Raj gave you an overview of the company and our strategy earlier. We partner with Raj's CTO organization, as well as other functions around Juniper, like engineering, supply chain, marketing, etc. Our team is responsible for intern and early career recruiting and the internship program that we run in the summer months. We have a global program. The US internship program is for 12 weeks in the summer and our internships are project based. So interns are placed within teams and work closely together with their managers, mentors and other colleagues to deliver a project that they're responsible for driving. Some of these projects are for external customers and others, others are used internally, but all of them are important. And at the end of the summer, every intern presents at the intern showcase to which the whole company is invited. In addition to working on their projects, our interns participate in a holistic internship program, which includes social events, professional development opportunities, and networking activities. So for example, we have a speaker series, which allows interns to hear from and interact with interesting Junivators. And this is an important part of being a Junivator, learning to interact with colleagues, making friends and building connections. For example, last week, one of our former PhD interns who teaches a class invited another intern to be a guest lecturer in her class, remotely, of course. And these are the types of friendships and connections that persist beyond the summer. So our internship programs, a great way to experience Juniper. Um, you may have seen we're certified as a great place to work in our on Fortune's uh, you know, world, world's most admired companies list, right? So these are external endorsements. And I just encourage you, wherever you go, to look and observe for yourself at the potential opportunities you have. Um, I'd say that Juniper's culture was the deciding factor um, that, uh, for which I you know, joined this company um, after I graduated from grad school. And that's what's kept me here for the past 14 years. The other aspect, what will you work on? Um, you know, as you look out at what you can do in your career, there will be many opportunities in areas which are not consumer oriented or household names, but which are sometimes just as important. So my advice would be to look at these companies, what they produce, who their customers are, how much these customers value their offerings. So um, just to wrap up, if you're interested in a position, we encourage you to visit juniper.net slash university. There you will find a link to our job site. Uh, we have intern positions already open and um, you, know, you might see a single posting for each distinct role, but you know, there may be multiple roles behind that and more will be opened in the coming weeks and months. Uh, by the way, if you are graduating this year, you're looking for a full-time position, you can apply to jobs categorized as both experienced as well as new college grad roles. Um, and you know, in the networking portion that follows today, uh, Hong, one of our recruiters will be there. I'll also stop by. Um, thank you so much. I hope you're getting a lot out of today's event. It seems like such a rich event, uh, such good content. Um, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Romy. And thank you, Raj, for your sponsorship here. And uh, uh, anyone who wants to go to the Juniper room after the uh, online session ends, uh, there will be a room available. Uh, and then you can network with them. Uh, with that, uh, what's up? Let's go to the can you Can you hear now? And then yes, you yes. Talk go ahead. more specifically about the uh, yes. rest of the things. Uh, so, Piyush, uh, Veridic Solution is a cloud native digital transformation company. And let me actually use a visual just to explain who Veridic Solution is. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to share. So we actually provide uh, digital transformation services for many different companies. And one of the ways we proud ourselves is by saying that we actually combine talented minds like students and early career entrepreneurs that are attending this conference 
and we combine them and we basically use innovation and learning and uh, training to solve the most complex issues. We are US based, fast growing, uh, private equity based, uh, and our future, we believe that it's a multi-cloud future. So we focus on AWS, GCP, and Azure. And our culture, which is customer-centric, employee empowerment, these are the things that excite our employees all the time. And we have centers in US and India in both places, and we actually hire in both countries as well. Great. And what are the specific things that, um, what kind of clients do you guys service? Yeah, so Piyush, we service uh, all kinds of clients, uh, you know, many Fortune 500 clients. Uh, you can see them uh, on our website. And I believe I have uh, some visuals here as well. Uh, so, you know, likes of 3M, uh, Capital One, Collabra, Samsung, many of these are companies <coughs> that you uh, use all uh, every single day, uh, whether you use their products or services. And many of these people consume services from their exhibitions. Wonderful. How about talking the specific goodies you got for the early career engineers and the students? It's like we've got some tools that you have to offer for the students here and the attendees here. Why don't you talk about those? Absolutely, Piyush. Uh, we believe that all the people who are entering the job market these days, uh, they should be given all the help uh, that they can in the form of various tools of coaching and so on. So we offer more than just job. Of course, we offer job and candidates can apply directly to various, uh, various different jobs. We have uh, hundreds of openings available for various different kinds of roles. Uh, but we also offer these goodies so that candidates can use these tools uh, to uh, pursue any kind of a job search, you know, uh, and this we have found have been very effective. Uh, the resume that uh, we expect candidates should be putting out there should be very high quality. So we have free tools in place where candidates can go build their resume. Uh, we also believe that candidates should be getting an assessment uh, ahead of the time so that they know where they stand and they can improve on the skills that they may be lacking. So we actually offer a free skill assessment report. And this is very helpful and it can give them a taste of what the interview process may look like. And lastly, we actually personally connect the candidates with hundreds of recruiters. Uh, and this way, candidates can ask all kinds of questions. The recruiters also can provide some coaching in terms of uh, how to interview you and what kind of uh, questions they can expect in the interview process. And so we believe these three things that we are offering to the uh, students and early career uh, entrepreneurs here uh, to be very, very useful. That's great, Vikas. So it seems like not only a, a job search engine, you are more of a platform through which people can build their career. And this is very exciting, guys. Uh, please make use of this feature and the goodies being made available to all the attendees of this session. And uh, Vikas, to tell me more about how do we support the immigrants, especially students of Indian origin who may require a visa, help with uh, finding internships and uh, opportunities that are commensurate with their experience. Uh, yeah. what, what does Veridic do for them? Yeah. So many companies, as you know, many large companies, uh, you know, may not be applying for the visa for these candidates. And many students, they do require, uh, whether it's H-1B visa and maybe processing through to the OPT or CPT process. Uh, Veridic, we hire uh, many students from the Indian origin and uh, many other countries uh, who are pursuing studies here, whether they're doing their master's degree or bachelor's degree and after getting their degree, they are looking for a job. Uh, so Veridic will help you and help the, uh, these applicants in getting their visa uh, in a uh, very streamlined fashion. And uh, at the same time, uh, we apply for H1s. Uh, we, we actually, uh, you know, we, do, we don't restrict visa as uh, any, any criteria by which the job is not applied. And through this, they can actually work for the dream companies that they hope that they want to work for. And they, maybe the company is not applying for the visa, but by joining Veridic, they can work on the same projects uh, that the, the large companies may be offering. Excellent, Vikas. Thank you so much for being here. And if there's any parting words of wisdom that you want to share, please, this is your time. Well, thank you, Piyush. Uh, thank you for giving us an opportunity. Uh, I welcome everyone to join us in harnessing technology. Thank you, Vikas. And I believe there are Veridic representatives in various chapters that we are beaming this program to. 
to meet in person, to network. So in Dallas, in California, in Maryland, and please network and feel free to connect on LinkedIn. With that, thank you very much, Vikas. All right, guys, we are coming to our partner section, uh, end of our partner section, but we have UT Dallas folks waiting in the wings. I want to invite Gaurav, um, our professor sponsor from UT Dallas and uh, uh, ASCI Dallas chapter president, Puneet Dixit, to come on the line, please, and uh, say a few words before we break uh, away into the online networking and uh, then the Dallas folks would network amongst themselves. All right. Hey, Gaurav, good to see you. Floor is yours. Well, thank, thank you again for you know, letting us all be part of this uh, event here. You know, we heard a lot of great, uh, I would say, ideas rather than anything else. And uh, I'm sure that the students are looking forward to even talking to you all further about this. Uh, we are excited that ASCI has come to UT Dallas. This is the first event we are doing, and hopefully in the future we have more such events where our students can benefit from it. Again, at the end of the day, for us, what matters is what is valuable for our students. So again, thank you so much for thank coming you, here. Thank yeah. you. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, Karo, for partnering with us. Uh, uh, so yeah, we are excited. I'm really hoping that we will have more such yeah. Uh, yeah. sessions, uh, more of the sessions completely focused on UT Dallas. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Piyush, I think uh, we'll have a little bit of a brief here uh, on a local side of it. Uh, we, we had a quite a bit of an uh, attendance here. There were close to 400 folks, but as now the students have to go for their classes and all the stuff, the classes don't end. <laughs> so, totally understand. And I know we had more than 300 registrants and a majority of them were from UT Dallas. That's why we gave you the prime time here. But this program would be available for replay. So the, I know you missed the first uh, 20 to 30 minutes. So people can listen to that. But more importantly, I want to personally thank Gaurav for the partnership and all those who made this program a success. More, uh, and, and there's the University Connect team that we have. And uh, above all, there's Watsla here who manages all our technology at the back. So thank you, Watsla. Thank you, UT uh, Dallas. And thank, thank you, University Connect team. And now we'll get into the online networking portion. So those who want to stay, there'll be three rooms, one for Juniper, one for Emerson, and one for Veridic. And uh, uh, if there's any, and we will be able to shift from one to another. So uh, let's uh, go uh, and and do those uh, uh, networking sessions, please. <laughs>